Zagreb is the capital, largest and most populous city of Croatia, with just under one million inhabitants. The region was part of the Roman province of Pannonia until the collapse of the Western Empire in the 5th century. German Ostrogoths then controlled it for 50 years until Byzantium took it over. The history of Zagreb itself began in the 11th century on the hill of Kaptol in what is now Upper Town, when Hungarian King Ladislaus I founded the Catholic Zagreb Diocese, now an archdiocese. The primary areas of Old Zagreb are Upper Town, encompassing the hills of Kaptol and Gradec, and Lower Town. We stayed in Lower Town, a Sobe homestay with a shared kitchen and a balcony that had a view towards Upper Town and the mountains north of Zagreb. There was also a cafe across the street and a neighborhood bar a block away. Lower Town is very walkable, but it's also bike friendly and has an extensive tram system. There seems to be two cafes around every corner throughout Lower Town, and there's even a Mick Cafe, but not a single Starbucks. We selected a restaurant for our first Zagreb dinner next to the funicular to Upper Town, putting it on the to-do list for another day. We got under shelter in the nick of time, moments before the skies opened up and dumped rain on the city. Outside our window in the morning, the cafe was busy, but otherwise the street was quiet. We walked to the main square in Lower Town and the city market, which extended to Upper Town. There was so much for sale. Fresh fruits, veggies, flowers, and even craft rakia, the local brandy. The upper town section of the market is overlooked by the beautiful spire of St. Mark's Church. The square around the cathedral, the oldest part of the city, has some of the oldest fortifications in Zagreb. Originally built after the 13th century Mongol invasion, and improved in anticipation of the Ottoman Turk incursions of the 15th century. Unfortunately, the church interior is closed for renovation, along with all of the churches and many of the buildings in the city. An earthquake centered in the mountains north of the city hit in March of 2020, rendering nearly 200 buildings uninhabitable. An 1880 earthquake, also in the northern mountains, Stop the cathedral clock at 7 hours, 3 minutes, and 3 seconds. It sits frozen at that time today. Walking around the city, there's a clear difference in the architecture between upper and lower towns. Upper town has beautiful structures that are either from before the 16th century or were rebuilt to match. St. Mark's Church and the Greek Catholic Co-Cathedral of St. Cyril and Methodius are particularly great examples. Unfortunately, both were under renovation from the 2020 earthquake, so we couldn't see inside. Vic was able to get a peek inside the Basilica of the Sacred Heart in Lower Town near our apartment. The damage was heartbreaking to see, especially knowing that all churches in Zagreb would be unusable for a long time to come. More touristy parts of Upper Town were the colorful cravat stores. Apparently, the cravat, precursor to the necktie, was first used by 17th century Croatian mercenary cavalry, and the modern Croatian honor guard is called the cravat regiment. We were also treated to some traditional music. <laughs> Be 
Walking around Lower Town, by contrast, felt like we could be in the streets of Paris or any Western European city designed in the 19th century. There were also modern buildings, including indoor malls, food courts, and markets in Lower Town. Lower Town has many beautiful parks, including one below the cathedral, that are used for lounging, dating, picnicking, family outings, and sometimes parties. There are several routes between lower and upper towns, but the funicular and adjacent stairway are the most dramatic that we found. Me being me, I took the stairs, not nearly as steep as I'd initially thought, but a Vic was a smart one and took the funicular for five kuna, about 80 US cents, which turned out to be a much more scenic trip than the stairs. The view of Lower Town at the top was pretty awesome too. After some more exploration, we did find a scenic walking route down to Lower Town with ivy covered walls and lush trees that provided shade and funneled a cool breeze up the hillside. This creative knitted graffiti along the path says Apple in Croatian. Zagreb has many museums Unfortunately, most of the older, more traditional ones were closed for earthquake renovation. However, many of the newer, more quirky museums are open and are truly awesome. The first one we visited was a museum of chocolate. It chronicles the story of the wondrous ground product of roasted seeds from its origins in Mesoamerica through the modern age. The early sections were particularly interesting since we got a hands-on lesson in grinding cacao seeds on our Costa Rica trip last year. Our entry ticket was a collection of different stages and types of chocolate. From the raw seed to unsweetened chips, the semi-sweet and two other sweet blends of chips. Following the Mesoamerica section, succeeding rooms featured pre-industrial versions, industrial age brands, then modern brands. Other sections presented different types of chocolate molds and a map of how chocolate production has spread around the world. Another unusual exhibition is the Museum of Naive Art. Photography was not allowed inside, so I had to make do with posters and postcards. The naive artists are painters and sculptors from mostly rural Croatia who, like Vincent van Gogh and Frida Kahlo, were self-taught with no formal training. Their skill and determination shine through in their creations. To us, the most unusual museum in Zagreb and the most unusual museum we've ever visited is for Broken Relationships. A crowdsourced project started in 2006, Broken Ships for short. It contains donated items from around the world commemorating terminated relationships of all kinds. The entry tickets and gift shop items underscore the tone and theme of the exhibits. Some of the notable items include a very old racing bike from a woman whose partner left. She no longer had any use for that old wreck. Eerily, a set of voodoo dolls made from clothing left by former lovers. Poignantly, a parachute from a partner who died skydiving. An Egyptian bean heater because the relationship never heated up. Bouquets and war medals from a husband who never came home from Afghanistan. 
and hilariously, a Chef Boyardee pizza kit for someone who ended their relationship with pizza. A technology museum named for Serbian-born Nikola Tesla is situated next to the University of Zagreb in western Lower Town. It has some interesting and unusual displays on the history of technology, including a room dedicated to the famous inventor himself. It seems to be popular for school field trips. A short walk from the university and operated by the university, the Zagreb Botanical Gardens are fairly small but have a decent variety of plants. The nominal entrance fee makes it reasonable for an hour's stroll through the peaceful setting. The display containing the tiny Venus flytraps are easily located next to the Audrey-sized metal sculpture. After spending a week in Zagreb, we rented a car and drove about 120 kilometers south, stopping for lunch in the rural town of, excuse my pronunciation, Rakovica. Outside of Zagreb, Croatia gets agricultural quickly, with rolling, expansive hills until you get to the mountains. Our timing was pretty good, as Zagreb temperatures were rising and the mountains are about 10 degrees Fahrenheit cooler than the city. After lunch, we drove to the nearby Borac Caves. Walking down the 400 meter road from the parking area reminded me of the Shenandoah Valley back home in Virginia. The mountains of the region, much like the Blue Ridge Mountains of the eastern United States, are largely formed from sedimentary limestone, so they are shot through with hundreds of caverns. Our guide led us on a short hike through the woods, then, putting on hard hats, we were ready to descend into the hillside. Archaeologists have uncovered many artifacts in the cave, including human and animal bones, as well as pottery. This composite bear skeleton was assembled from many partial skeletons of cave bears dating to around 30,000 years ago. Our tour ended 200 meters into the cave, which then continued on another 300 meters, but it got too narrow for a walking tour. Our guide had one more surprise in store for us, which went something like this. When the lights came back on and we left the cave, we drove to our Sobe home for the night farther south near Plitvica Lakes National Park, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But that deserves its own video. We hope that you enjoyed our first vlog from Croatia. If you did and want to see more from us, Please hit like and subscribe on our channel and feel free to share. Vala.